Hey, hey. So, Agneta's new album, A Plus, is out now. What do you think? What is your first impression? The album uses Agneta's original vocals from the album A, but re-recorded with entirely new backing tracks and new arrangements, as well as a brand new song. There will be a full-on review on this channel soon. But today, we will dive into every single song and we will hand it over to Agneta's friend and producer, Jürgen Elofsson. This is his return to the channel after the big interview. And now, Jürgen Elofsson with an exclusive track-by-track -track commentary exploring the inspiration and creation for each song on A+. Where do we go from here? That was the new, the new song, <laughs> the, new, the new kid in town. It was written by me and Camila Bayrak. We wrote it when we had started the production of the new A Plus record. And um, once it was done, uh, I felt it kept on talking to me like, this is good, you know. This, uh, and as we went working with Agneta, it started to say, play me to Agneta, play me to Agneta. It's like, and then, then I had Agneta here for one day listening mm -hmm. to the new versions and she really liked them, and um, I felt like, wow, uh, this is the moment to play that song. So I took a chance, take a chance on me, you know. <laughs> but I, I took a chance, and then uh, from there on, she said, wow, I love this song. It's really good. Um, but this girl, she's so, she's such a great singer. I can possibly do it as good as her. Yes, you can, I said. And then she, I gave it to her, and she came back. I think we spoke maybe a week later, and as she said, yeah, let's try, let's do it, you know. And that was last year, in August, we recorded. And when did you start to write it? Uh, in March, uh, that same year, end of March, so 2022. So, the journey of a song, eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. She was really nervous. Uh, I remember, as I said, you know, I, I sat up here and I was like, yeah, this is so great, and she was down there. Oh, I don't know if it's good enough, <laughs> you know, so, so she was like so worried that it wasn't going to be good, you know, but it sounds perfect. Uh, Back on Your Radio is actually the first song that we uh, did a new version of. And um, once I, g I got sort of this um, question from Magneto, well, you know, what, what if we had recorded the record now? What would it, what would it have sounded like, you know? And I thought, well, <laughs> what, a, what a cool question. And she didn't know it at the time, but I went back home and uh, I actually uh, I asked my co-producer, Anton, to uh, here's, the, here's the recordings, strip it of everything, keep the voice, and then go and do something crazy. And he came back with something crazy, and I really loved it, you know. And then from there, uh, when we finished it up, and then we tried, let's try another one. And then uh, we did a couple of them, and, and then I uh, got a hold of Agneta, and she came over to listen, and she really gave us a thumbs up. And uh, so that was the initial song, the start, start, the starting point. Mm. Mm. What was the importance to start with that song? I felt that song, we can real that's going to be very doable in the sense of taking it out and turning it into something else. Other songs are harder here to, to uh, make, you know, uh, but this one, uh, it was also my song. It's like a, I wrote it, it's my own song. So if there would be a problem somewhere, <laughs> I wouldn't have to ask anyone, you know, I can just do whatever I want. So we just went with it. And I was so blown away by the result, actually. I thought, wow, this is crazy. It just sounds so modern and fresh. And she, she absolutely loved it herself. So, uh, then by then we we knew we we can do this. Let's do it. You know. Jürgen Elofsson, if I may interrupt you for a moment, I want to say something to these folks because we were invited to talk with Jürgen about all things Agneta Felskog, the person, the artist, singer and songwriter, and her latest project A Plus. The result is a 30-minute interview which you can now watch on this channel or right after this video. The feedback and comments that you gave me makes me very emotional. Thank you. And if you are new to the channel, this is an in-depth exploration of all things ABBA and their solo work. 
reviews, history, location videos, and now even exclusive interviews. Wow, that's a gift. I know. So please, Jürgen Elofsson, continue. I was a challenge because, um, you know, it's a Gary Barlow co-write with me, and I was like, it, it's been out, it was a single already, and lots of people like this song. And so when you have a single, it's different because then more people have the idea of it. But I, I figured, let's not care about that. Uh, we did the same thing. Uh, Anton took a lot, you know, again, you know, unlocked the song for us. And then, because I was too close to the material, so that was the whole approach to this was Anton unlocked the songs and I could continue. Um, and then what we did, was, uh, I, s I felt like I, I, I knew I wanted it to be more rhythmic. Uh, but I also knew I wanted to have a certain swing and it ended up being like a bossa nova It's a very you know, like a very modern kind of bossa nova is touch and it worked like a charm with our voices and yeah That's it. That's it's it. a modern bossa nova yeah. <laughs> and actually yeah, he loved it <laughs> Gary Bono loved it so. mm -hmm. Approved. Yeah, he approved boom big stamp. He actually said I don't want to say it, but yeah, I say I think he said I like this even better than the old one, <laughs> but but maybe it's just because you hadn't heard the old one before. Anyway, he was happy and I was happy. I was a little nervous though. Dance Your Pain Away is uh, one of those songs that I felt had that energy. I wanted to keep the energy. Uh, but I, at, at this time, I was also very inspired by um, Elton John and Dua Lipa's duet. I thought that was the perfect modern a classic pop song, you know. I thought they did such a great job with that song. And I, f because we were so uh, inspired by it, we felt that's the way to go. So let's try our take on that, our take on the um, Dua Lipa, Elton John song. And um, I think it worked, you know. So that's the inspiration. It's still very much a dance club song more accentuated now than it was before. Before it was more like a sort of disco live drums, you know. This is much more in the clubs today. Wow, I Was a Flower. Um, I knew that I Was a Flower was a very slow song. It was um, beautiful and it was uh, sort of grand. And I just wanted to bring, bring it home, bring it a bit closer to me. Uh, I also wanted to bring uh, bring the song up a bit in tempo because I, I wanted to hear the song on the radio. I, I really want to hear this song on the radio, I felt. So I, uh, let's make the radio version of that song. And, um, and then I tried different ways. This wasn't an easy one because the song is so good. But I realized that uh, what we did was to find a few instruments that was kind of running through the song all the way. Uh, it's kind of in the drum, the way it moves, uh, and a, a couple of other instruments, the way they kind of become the spine and the, the skeleton of the song, you may say. And in, in there rests Agneta now and her voice. And it feels like, it's now it's a mix, almost, there's almost hip-hop in the song, you know. But you can't tell because she's singing. But if you replace her, with a, an American rapper, you would go, "Wow, <laughs> that works!" You know. So anyway, that's uh, uh, I was a flower, and I I think it's one of my absolute favorites on on the uh, the record. Perfume in the breeze. Also, again, that was a little tough. It had this already. It had an energy on A. We felt like, what are we going to do? So I wanted to tell the story about, you know. She's talking about a memory of a, a summer past. She's, it's like she's singing in December on that summery place. And you know, uh, a vacation place like the southern of France or whatever, you know, when it's like really rainy and dust, it's not that nice anymore, you know. And that's, I feel she's stranded there in one of those places. And she sings about something that happened that summer. And I wanted to bring that into the music in this song that we didn't do in the other version uh, as much. Uh, so, hence the, the 
the drums and the disco beat sort of related to oh, dance your pain away but a bit more 70s a bit more like the Bee Gees or something could have been the beat from Saturday Night Fever <laughs> I think Past Forever was uh, one of the hardest songs uh, I think maybe even the hardest song to to find how do I tell the story of this song and in the end I realized that the song is so beautiful uh, and the words are so beautiful it needs a counterpart that aren't that pretty you know to actually accent you know to to bounce back and forth against so uh, I came up with this sort of drum uh, pattern beat it's like an old sort of rusty drum machine uh, being the the spine the 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 f you know the the concrete of that song and everything is sort of on top of that so you have the the, the play you know it's, it's dark light uh, it's ugly beautiful it's that that sort of thing that makes it uh, work and here I also invent invited a, a guest uh, to, to play against her vocals uh, a, a very a very legendary guitarist in Sweden who everyone knows who he is, you know, he's been around since the 60s and he's a fantastic guitar player and he used to play actually with Agneta on her old records, her old solo records and his name is Janne Schwaffel. I just ran into him by chance but I asked him immediately and he said yes of course, you know, and he loves to do different things so he showed up and played a guitar one day and, and that turned into the guest performer on Past Forever. Fantastic. And he played on ABBA's records as well. He played on ABBA records as well, mm -hmm. of course, yeah. He, he, he probably played on everybody's record, you know, to be honest. But Great to have him back. That, it, to me, I is the song that was opening up everything for us on A. It was the first thing we recorded, the first thing people heard, and why they decided they wanted us to make the record in the first place. They loved it and they thought, wow, this is so, so beautiful and things like that. But the thing with this one is that it jumps up and down in keys and we couldn't really take that away. I didn't want to do that uh, because part of that song is actually how it jumps in the keys. Um, you know, the, the different key in the chorus, uh, choruses compared to the verses and things like that and it's got a big key change in the end. And so that meant like I couldn't do that with that, I couldn't you know, twist it so much. So we wanted to keep that. Instead, we wanted to go, let's find a beat that really moves this song forward, uh, a modern but timeless sort of beat. And I also went back into the almost the hip hop world, you know, uh, 90s hip hop, you know, the very related to actually I was a flower, the same, the same drummer, you may say, came in and did that thing as well. It's the sounds are the same. We kept it so it feels like it's together and it sort of moves this song like a little train all the way through. And then there's lots of rhythmic things going on instead. Uh, and at one place in the song, I think it's before the last chorus after second verse, it's almost like you suddenly enter a time machine and you hop back into the 70s uh, LA scene, you know where, you know, Hall and Oates or somebody like that would play because suddenly it sounds like that. And it's like a, just a wonderful little moment. So it's, yeah, it's, a, it's I think it turned out beautifully. Yeah, Bubble is very, uh, it's different this time, uh, very different. Uh, uh, again, uh, Anton, go unlock. And when he came back, he had uh, added a bit of a different chord structure and I really liked that. Um, he took a chance and I just followed on that. I thought it was, yeah, it's the right way to go. So we kept, we actually added new chords to this song. I felt there was something George Michael here. There was something like the older album. There was something from uh, also from uh, Listen Without Prejudice, a little bit of freedom, a little bit of whatever. So I just wanted to take the moment and, and play around with that feeling because George Michael is one of my biggest heroes so and I loved his music so it happened so that Agneta as well loved George Michael so uh, and uh, she she loved what we did with it but at, at one part in the song she said oh, I'm so tired of my voice can I can we have a little break here <laughs> you know and I thought wow okay let's see what happens then 
and uh, that became uh, a fantastic place for the saxophone solo to come in and, and sort of add the finishing touch of George Michael and I his love that bit. legacy. Yeah. When You Really Love Someone was, of course, the, the lead single from the old album A. Eh? I really loved that song and I really loved the way it was and the way it came out and it's, it's got a story of its own. So I felt, uh, let's uh, play around with this one, let's take it really far away from the original. So I speeded that song up quite a lot, you know, uh, made it um, almost like very inspired by like people like Drake and those, we added that whole thing, total different chord structure, um, more jazzy in a sense. Remember keeping the melodies, so but in a new environment. So suddenly the song just changes. Everything shifts. It becomes a different thing. It becomes a different time, and then the speed gave it a total new energy. And you, if you take out and get out, you can place actually Drake in there or some someone like him. It works, but it's funny. The funny thing is here that it actually works so well with Agneta. It doesn't sound like it's a part. It sounds just right, and that's I've been thinking about that. How can, how can she fit here? But she does. It just feels so natural. And I think it's be, maybe it's because we have a voice in our s systems. It's in, in our DNA. It's like whatever we do with it, it works somehow. So yeah, I f I still think it sounds like a little hit. So <laughs> we'll see. So the final track uh, is still the final track. It's I keep them on the floor beside my bed. Uh, it's the Agneta co-write, and that one I had to think a lot about because I knew Agneta was, you know, she she's got it in her system, so I didn't want to take it too far away from that. I mean, in her original, she felt like it was a lullaby, so I wanted to uh, take it back to that. Uh, and, and uh, give it also, I mean, I, she wrote it on the piano, so I wanted to add a piano to, uh, so I found a really fantastic keyboard player, uh, uh, Therese uh, is her name, and uh, she's like one of these musical geniuses that can really play a piano. So I put, put her in playing a, a Rhodes, a Fender Rhodes piano, and um, so we keep that all the way through the song, like a like something to hold hold on to and then the rest is sort of beautifully the, s the story of the song is beautifully told on top of that and she really liked that and I was happy because it's her song as well mm. so, yeah, so that's it that's it so now that we've gone through all songs on the album which are your favorite tracks what is your overall first impression of the album Agneta's A Plus I hope you enjoyed these very special insights into the creative process. And now you can watch the exclusive interview on the channel exploring Agneta Felskog, the person and artist. All right, until then, hello. Thank you.